It's time to play web dev trivia. Three of us web developers are going to take our best guess at a series of web development questions. My name is Wes. My name is Scott. I'm CJ. Hello. All right. Question. What percentage of devs reported writing more TypeScript than JavaScript in 2024? The options are A, 38%, B, 56%, C, 67%, or D, 78%. I think I know because, so this is from the state of JS survey and I got in a yeah. Reddit argument about the answer to this. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it, it being multiple choice is actually harder because there are two yeah. here that are very close and I could have guessed in the middle. All right, are you guys ready? I'm ready. I'm saying C, 67%. Oh, D. D. I feel like it's higher than 67, but I don't yeah. feel like it's 78. That's I also I said 67. And the answer is yeah. C, right. 67%. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here for the downfall of CJ's uh, total yeah, victory. Those Redditors yeah. got in my head, man. I, I was going back and forth. I was like, look at the survey results. What are you talking about? I wonder, <laughs> I wonder like what percentage of it is in other areas, you know? Because like people oh, yeah. that are taking a JavaScript survey are obviously very excited about the future of JavaScript. Yeah. Well, if you look on Reddit, every person uh, uses Firefox, despite it having what two percent usage, <laughs> every per yeah, like the Reddit is like totally skewed all the time. So they they have their their ways of doing things for sure. For sure. All right. Next up, uh, which testing tool, despite being fourth in usage, topped the interest, retention, and overall positivity rankings in twenty twenty four? Yeah, your options are Vtest, Jest, Cypress, or Mocha. I'm locked in already. You're locked in. Okay, I have to think about it because. I was focused on my speech because I got my wisdom teeth out like six oh, days ago. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most words I've said. Our, our whole team is like barely hanging on here. I'm, <laughs> I'm concussed. CJ has his wisdom teeth taken out. Randy got the stomach flu. Oh, man, we are. We're, we're healthy. We're a healthy bunch right now. Well, I'm just a specimen of health, so nothing wrong with me. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Wes, you're next. It's a, yeah. it's a gonna happen. Yeah. I know the answer to this. This is one of those things I read it without even understanding what I was reading. I know the answer. All right, All ready? Right. A, V-Test. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. V-Test is taking over, man. Everybody who uses it is just like, oh, yeah, this is way better. V-Test is awesome. Yeah. Definitely zero config. Yeah. It's it's all the things that we love about uh, V. Mm -hmm. It honestly yeah. makes me write more tests because yeah. between... <laughs> I don't know if anything can do that for me, but <laughs> yeah. But between the, like, the hurdle to, like, adding tests to a project that doesn't have it is nothing. Yeah, and the, the fact that you can scaffold out all of the tests with uh, AI is you can you can get some very good tests very quickly. Taking the time to not write tests is not so much of an excuse. I'll still use it, but not so much of an excuse anymore. Easy. Oh, yeah. Nice, we just assumed nice. we got it all yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, you gave the whole spiel about why Vtest was the best without even knowing we had the answer. Next question. Which JavaScript feature are people most excited about in the new proposals? Temporal API, decorators, pattern matching, or records and tuples? I know this one because Scott and I have been talking about it on the podcast for like 16 years. Yeah. And I cannot wait for this to be in all of the browsers and all the runtimes. Ready? A, temporal. And the answer was Temporal API, uh, which makes a lot of sense because it's going to replace a lot of libraries like Moment.js and Date Functions. So, yeah. So the current score is Wes with three, uh, yours truly with three, and CJ oh, with two. Oh, so sorry, <laughs> CJ. <laughs> we feel so bad for you that you're not in first place this time. If you don't want to be in last place with site reliability and uh, coding issues and problems on your site, your site the stinks. The CJ of websites. Yeah, if is, you don't want to be the CJ of websites. You don't want to have the CJ of websites, no. You, you want to use Sentry, Sentry.io. <laughs> and in fact, uh, Sentry just added uptime monitoring, something that you know I've always had to bring in a third party that's not something I'm already using for uptime monitoring. So the fact yeah. that all my stuff's already in Sentry, now I get uptime monitoring. Big fan of that. That way I can so make sure. So much better than updog monitoring. Yes, so much better than updog monitoring. I'm not giving into that. I, Come on. Yes. <laughs> all right. 
Next question. Which package manager, while not being the most used, had the highest retention rate in 2024? We're talking oh. retention. Yeah. The options are NPM, Yarn, PNPM, or Bun. Not the highest. I have my answer, and it's just, honestly, it's just what I use, because I think I started using it more. Last, that well, last you year. Are, you, you're you're kind of giving away here. Do you know, you guys know what I use? Um, no. <laughs> that means you would have to watch my videos. I would assume you use PNPM, but I, I feel like the answer to this is bun. All, All right, right, I'm locked in. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. PNPM. I'm saying bun. Wes drew a, a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> it's not a jack-o'-lantern. It's the bun logo. It's the bun logo. It's beautiful, Wes. <laughs> Thank you. It looks like, a, it looks like an onion or a, a garlic clove with eyes. Thank you. It's uh, a, yeah. it's a um, what do you call those it's Chinese bun. buns? It's about Dim sum? Yeah. Or bao oh. yeah. Yes! PNPM. Nice. Oh, I should nice. have guessed that. I guessed it spe specifically because, yeah, people tend to, to like it when they use it. And it's like, it doesn't cause that many tro troubles if you end up using it. So it's like, you, you try it out, it's smaller, it's faster, and then why would you yeah, go back? Yeah. Like, I think beginning of the last year, last year I was using NPM, then I switched to PNPM. And now mm -hmm. most, most of the open source projects I come across, especially like tools and libraries, they have a PNPM lock file. Like they, a lot of, of the open source ecosystem has switched to PNPM too. Yeah, I'm at yeah. a point now where if something uses yarn, I'm like, ugh. Yeah. I, I, I run into issues when it's yarn and I never run into, I'd rather just straight up NPM or PNPM. All right, next up, got a code quiz. Oh what man, Wes is gonna like this. In the console. It's an My, iffy, uh, iffy, an immediately yeah. invoked yeah. functional expression. Yeah. Yes. We used to have to use ifies all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So your potential answers are, so it's it's logging out type of A and then type of B. So your answers are undefined, undefined, number and number, undefined and number, or <sighs> number and undefined. So what is the type of A? What is the type of B? This sucks. I don't know the syntax. I'm I'm really good at this. I'm going to get this too. Oh, yeah. Dude. I love these little obtuse scoping questions. Okay, you gave me a hint, Wes, because we are talking about scope here because that's inside oh, of a function. shoot. <laughs> so I have an answer, but I think I this an code will actually error out and not run at all. Can I? On the, on the okay, let, let's, <laughs> before yeah, let's we get reveal. the answer, let's let's give our, our opinions on what, why we think it is that. So why yes. do you think it's going to error, CJ? Uh, because when you hit type of A, it's not in scope. And so I guess if you're in strict mode, uh, if there isn't a variable in scope, you'll get a uh, can't resolve uh, or like A is not defined. If you're not in strict mode, then it would just uh, oh, hoist, the, good hoist question. those variables. What's the environment? Yeah, I mean, if we're if it's just the code here, it's not strict mode. So it and, would be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's reveal our answers first. Hold on. I think it's going to be, if you run this in the console, which I think it is because of the, the syntax highlighting, uh, it's going to be undefined and then number because A is scoped to the function, but B is not. Oh, oh but you, is it? Oh, that A, is. No. No, oh, no, no. You're my, not declaring the variable B inside of the function. Therefore, it is it hoisted is, to the oh, global scope. Oh, You man. think so? And okay, becomes my, number. That's what yeah, I think. Yeah, my thought is it stays within the scope of the function, which means after the functions and both, they're both undefined, but so that could be it. So, var yeah. a comma b declares two variables a and b inside of the function. Var a equals b yeah. is not declaring two variables. It's declaring a and b a is very. not declared. And when you are not in strict mode, you're allowed to do that. I'm really upset Ready? because I think Wes is think correct. The, yeah, I think the answer is don't write code like this. Yes. I wrote a uh, two and two <laughs> undefines. I, I'm you, saying undefined and number. Yes! Uh, Wes, I, the moment you gave your explanation, I knew I was wrong. Because <laughs> the moment you said B is not in the scope, I was... Mm, yeah. yeah. But if it's strict oh, mode, man. this would throw an error because B is not defined. And then also like A is not defined. Which HTTP header is used to prevent cross-site scripting, otherwise known as XXS, XSS attacks, by specifying which dynamic resources are allowed to load? Content security policy, 
uh, X content type options, strict transport security, or X frame options. That's, I know this one very easily because, actually I'm not gonna let Scott get the answer <laughs> by explaining it again. Yeah, you gotta give me a chance. I got it time. wrong last time by you explaining, so I already gave my answer, so. All right, got my answer in. All right. It's A, content security policy, I'm saying. I, I also agree. said A, content security policy. Yes. We have a very good episode from with Alex Sexton, who yeah. was like one of the very early employees at Stripe. And he talked all about content security, security policy and what's allowed to be embedded into a website. Yeah. You come across this too when you're building like Electron apps because Electron gives you a browser window, but you want to prevent potentially loading external scripts or going to external websites because that could be a security issue if like inside your desktop app. Like that, it would not be good if you're inside of like Slack or Discord and all of a sudden you're on some other website. So mm -hmm. those, those apps have a CSP that prevent external scripts mm -hmm. from being loaded in. All right. Which JavaScript feature allows for non-blocking IO operations? A, event loop. B, web workers, C, promises, or D, set time out? Um, oh, man. I think I know the answer that this is going for. Yeah. But technically, multiple of these things allow that. But yeah, I, I was thinking of, the same thing. Because of other mechanisms, but I think one of them like, cl like is clearly this thing. So that's what I'm going to go with. All right. Are we ready? Yep. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say promises, but the way that promises work is that they put stuff onto the event loop. I said web workers. Web workers. Yeah. So yeah, my logic there was like web workers literally don't execute on the main thread, so it's non-blocking. Right. Promises can access native APIs that are non-blocking, but a promise itself is still technically in the main thread. Same thing for anything put on set timeout. Like technically, the work inside of yeah. set timeout could call something in the browser that is a native API that's non-blocking, but. I, I also yeah. really wanted to say event loop because the reason why Ryan Dahl chose JavaScript for Node.js is because it was non-blocking IO. And that was, that's the talk. If you go back and l watch the, the talk from Ryan Dahl, is he says JavaScript is a good use case for non-blocking IO. And at the time, promises were not a part of the JavaScript language, so. Mm -hmm. It should be A, but I'm I'm sticking with C. If it's A, that these all are work inside of the event loop. I don't You're know. You're not going to even consider web workers. Yeah, Wes? if the answer is not B, then uh, I'm leaving. I'll see you all. Yeah, but. that's definitely not B. <laughs> all not right, let's get give us the answer. Yeah, event I loop. I don't. I don't. I don't. Nah, Wait, you give me that one, right? Well, no, you said, what did you say? You said, did you I, say I said C, but the event oh, loop. And then I went on a yeah. freaking history yeah. lesson <laughs> explaining why freaking JavaScript was chosen Listen, as a. Listen, hold on. What you, you can't do C. is you can't, you can't give one letter and one answer that are different to, to no, safeguard you. I, I wrote you. event loop right here. Look at it. <laughs> you said C, but the event loop. You uh -huh. rewind the tape. Ready? I'm going to say, I'm going to say promises, but. The way that promises work is that they put stuff onto the event loop. This one's a wash. It's a wash. I think it's a wash because web... No, it's not a wash. I get a half a point. How is web workers not correct, Wes? Because web workers are not the feature that allow that stops non-blocking IO operations. It didn't the, say what is the, the feature. The reason why JavaScript is non-blocking is because it, it, it queues things up and it sticks it into the event loop. It doesn't stay there and wait for that thing to be finished. But listen, the, the sentence is which yeah. feature allow which JavaScript feature allows for which web workers does is a JavaScript feature that does allow for this. Where like the question isn't what allows JavaScript to be non-blocking, which in case your answer would be then in fact, you know, I have the, the definitive answer. thing that will just nix this entire question. The event loop is not a feature. The event loop is oh, yes. JavaScript. It's not a feature. It's not a feature. Ah, that is true. <laughs> yeah, that is fair because like there's no event loop API, right? Yeah. I mean, except for like set timeout or set interval. Technically, those allow you to put functions onto the event loop, but the event loop itself yeah, is not. Yeah, but like you it. couldn't, you can't like get the event loop unless you have like a lower level. So we will give Wes a point for uh, giving C and then the wrong answer. 
Yes. And then we will also okay give CJ that. and uh, Scott a point for giving a half a point. No, uh, was, was an was actual very wrong. correct answer. All right, half a point. All right, next up. In web performance, what is the primary purpose of the rel preload in a link tag? A, load CSS files asynchronously. B, prioritize loading of critical resources. C, defer the loading of non-critical resources. Or D, establish early connections to required origins. Man, and this is another thing we just did a show on. I'm pretty sure. I see two decent answers up here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. I B. said D, establish early connections. I'm going with D. Uh, yeah, establish early connections. And then Wes is wrong with prioritize loading of critical resources. Yeah. Uh, but why do, so, yeah, why, do you, why do you think that was? Rel of pre, there's, there's preload and prefetch. Oh, and yeah. both of those will mm. download uh, the the assets and preload will mm. not parse the returned assets. So if you are preloading CSS, the browser is not parsing. It is simply downloading it. But prefetch will parse it out. Mm. Um, and then there's also some adi- distance, sorry, changes in the speculation API, which now allows us to do th- this as well. I saw the word pre and didn't read the rest of the word. I had also the wrong feature. Uh, I, I thought this was pre-connect, uh, mm. which is also rel pre-connect on link tags. Pre-connect is the, just the DNS uh, yeah. lookup. Doesn't it establish an early connection? Yeah, that's is D. That, yeah. Pre-connect that's what I'm D. saying. That, that's why I okay. wrote D. Cause I, so, I, what, yeah. so am I right in, in B? Yes! Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so this is the last question. I could only win if there were some interesting things at play here. So what we're going to do is we get to bet points. We get to wager how many points we want this next question to be worth. Jeopardy rules, right? right? You can only wager what you have. I'm wagering four of my six and a half points. I'm going big or going home. I'm wagering 5.5, baby. Same. I'm I'm going going all all the way. 4.5, all my points. All right, the question is a CSS selector. What does the CSS selector below target? The answers are A, the first A element inside of a div. B, the first P element inside of the div. C, all A elements with href attributes starting with HTTPS. And D, an element that is the immediate sibling of the first P child of a div where the A's href starts with <laughs> HTTPS. What a sentence. Holy shit. Uh, let me, uh, now that I've said all that, let me actually read this and uh, take a look at this. I just have to remember what all these symbols mean because I, I, always, I always have to look up the less than the plus, but I, I think I know. I think I know yeah. what they mean. Are you guys ready? No. This one's so easy. Well, I'm writing it all out, and then I'm going to go back and look at the multiple choice and see if my answer is up there. All right. Are we ready? We locked in. Ready? I D. wrote D, an element that is the immediate sibling of the first P child of a div where the A's href starts with HTTPS. Yeah. Uh, I it's, yeah. That Wes doesn't get the points because he didn't show his work. He just wrote the answer down. No, because I just know how <laughs> CSS works. You yeah, have I a did, div, and you grab I just wrote first, the whole answer. You I didn't grab the direct either. descendants that are paragraphs. Then from those direct descendants that are paragraphs, you only grab the first one. Yeah. Uh, then you look at the first sibling next to that paragraph, and you check if it is an anchor link, and also you're checking if the href is, attribute yeah. starts with HTTPS. Yes. Yep, perfect. Um, and so because of that, Wes, you wager, you had uh, 6.5 and you wagered 4, which means you have yep. 10.5. Well, I had 5.5 and I wagered 5.5. That means I have 11. <laughs> Shoot. Nice. Shoot. Comes yes. out of nowhere. And what about CJ? Uh, who, who cares? <laughs> no, <laughs> loses again. Typical. What did, okay. What did you wager, CJ? 4.5. I have nine. Uh, nine total. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Ah, what an ending. Yeah. I'm still sour about the event loop one, though. I feel like I... It, it, it will chat. Can you please tell me that I should have won this? <laughs> Web workers <laughs> is a totally valid Web workers is not <laughs> it's such a valid answer. answer. It's you should have lost a point oh, for choosing it's not that. A feature. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, subscribe to this channel. We do fun stuff like this all the time. We also have a podcast on Mondays and Wednesdays. And CJ has been creating a ton of deep dives, explainers, and just all around in depth JavaScript coverage. So smash that subscribe button, do all that stuff. 
As always, thank you so much for watching and check out one of these other episodes and uh, give it a click and you might like it.